Alrighty, let's head over to our final segment for today, our NFL Power Rankings, folks. Alrighty, big games this week. Uh, week 3 just wrapped up last night with the Cowboys and the Eagles, and now since every team has played, we can evaluate all of them and see who the new top 10 are in this league. So heading into Week 3, these were our Power Rankings. Browns at 10, 49ers at 9, Broncos at 8, Raiders at 7, Cowboys at 6, Ravens at 5, Chiefs at 4, Bucks at 3, Cardinals at 2, and the Rams, the number one team heading into week 3. Now, we had a lot of shakeup. We just saw the Bucks lose against the Rams. We had them at number 1. Do they say at number 1? Most likely, but you have to tune around, tune in and stick around to find out. So the Bucks lose, the Chiefs lose, the Ravens win close, the Cowboys blow out. How do we justify all that we've seen? Well, we're ready to unveil our new top 10. Alrighty, we have some teams exiting the top 10. Um, so let's quickly just kind of hint, uh, touch on why we are knocking these teams out of the top 10. So 49ers are out of the top 10. They just lost close game. Unfortunately, couldn't get it done down the stretch. But still a solid team, and they st are still kind of outside looking in at this moment. But uh, we had some other teams show up and show out, so we have to make room for them. So unfortunately, the 49ers are out. The Broncos are also going to be out of the top 10. Actually, no. Uh, we, ha we are doing something a little, little, um, mm, uh, what's the word? A little, um, a little wild at the, at the number 10 spot. Uh, but we'll get there. Um, anybody else falling truly out of the top 10? Is it just one team? It might just be one team. Well, let's just start talking about it. Let's start here. Uh, here we go. New power rankings. Are y'all ready? Uh, Browns are no longer the number 10 team. We'll see if they move up or move out. But this is what we're going to do for number 10 because I was having real difficulties on choosing this number 10 team. I had a couple of teams that I wanted to kind of put in the top 10, but it's just like there's one thing that makes me want to keep them out, but overall I want to put them in the top 10, so this is the first official battle for the top 10 spot, and they're going to, all three of these teams will be battling this week to see if they earn that number 10 spot or more or higher or if they fall out of the top 10, but we're going to put three teams in, at number 10, at the number 10 spot. I know it's kind of unorthodox and you, we brought, you can't do three teams at one spot. I get it, but we are going to do it and it's going to be a battle for that number 10 spot and we'll come reevaluate it come next week and we will definitely only have one team at number 10 come next week, but I want to give all these teams a fair shake at this 10th spot. So, our first team at number 10 is going to be the Green Bay Packers. We saw a big flounder job by Aaron Rodgers week one. Then they beat week two against the Lions. Can we weigh that heavy? And then they just win a close game against the 49ers in classic Aaron Rodgers fashion where he comes back and wins the game with 37 seconds left. That's what Aaron Rodgers does. And that's why a lot of people, you know, highly recognize him as one of the best quarterbacks of all time because this man gets it done over and over and over again in the clutch. So, for all that... We're going to leave the Packers here at number 10. One Week one, bad performance. Week two, it was against the Lions. Blah. And then week three, great performance. So it's so far one bad, one neutral, one good. It's kind of at a borderline. We'll know at week four. But we're going to give the Packers the opportunity to compete for their spot here. Also, all these teams have decent opponents coming up this week. So we can get a nice gauge on what they truly are made of. So the Packers, they do have the Steelers. And this is kind of a do or die game for the Steelers. So we'll see if the Packers rise to the occasion and beat them. They are at home. But the Packers in a fight for your spot here at number 10. Alrighty, the other team we're going to put here is the Chargers. I mean, what a great win against the Chiefs on the road. How can we not try to celebrate them and fit them in the top 10? Now, last week they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Cowboys, and now we know the Cowboys are legit contenders, and this is why we want to kind of truly recognize this Chargers team. They're 2-1, and one, Packers are 2-1, and one, and the last team they are going to be 3-0. and oh. But uh, yeah, this Chargers team, a chance to fight. Are they the real deal? Yes, they beat the Chiefs, but it took 
like four turnovers to win by six points and it took a fourth down call to go forward and score the touchdown and all that so it's still good and that's how you have to beat the Chiefs it, it takes all that to beat the Chiefs we want to see if they can keep it up next week the Chargers have the um had the Raiders, so that's going to be another good competition to see if the Chargers are the real deal or not. They'll be fighting for their spot at number 10. And then the last team right here, well, they're 3-0, and and they've been in the top 10. We have them at number 9, and we are going to move them back just slightly here. But we're going to have the Broncos in this category as well. Now, the Broncos, real easy three-game stretch here right off the rip. They just beat the... Uh, who are they? They just shut out the Jets, which is absolutely great. I mean, that's absolutely great to shut out a team. That's great, but it's the Jets. And then week two, the Broncos beat the Jaguars, and it was on the road, and that was a good game. And then week one, once again, on the road, but a lackluster opponent when they had to go, and they did beat the New York Giants. So, yes, they're 3-0. Yes, they're looking good, but are they legit? We'll know more, a little bit more this week when they have to go and face the... They have to go and face the... Baltimore Ravens so all three of these teams will truly show are they the real deal after kind of you know a flat start just kind of an okay start or a 3-0 start against good, bad teams we'll know more about all of them but uh, only one person can only one team can really truly kind of compete and stay in the top 10 and we'll see what team goes out and wins that spot so Packers Chargers Broncos I'm putting them all at number 10 and uh, we'll see what they do this week all righty here we go new number nine team and a new team in the top 10 we're gonna put the Buffalo Bills I gotta give credit to this defense it's been great the entire year unfortunately a little bit of a flounder job offensively week one that's why they lose to the Steelers but we've been seeing Josh Allen shored up here and he just had a real good game last week but this defense is getting them out to hot great starts getting great field position forcing the turnovers and when Josh Allen plays at his peak like we just saw last week uh, they are she they are real deal. Uh, they just made clowns of that Washington defense, dropped 40-plus points at home, no big deal. But, I mean, Emmanuel Sanders finally coming into his zone. A little bit of drops in Week 2, but, man, oh, man, he was right toe-to-toe, -to -toe, downfield, catching all the balls there, and a little bit better than Stephon Diggs last week. So, great wide receivers here. Josh Allen is truly showing that, you know, the first two weeks were just to get his feet underneath them, and he's ready to kind of rock now. So, Josh Allen had a great game there's no turning back now he can't flounder after that after that great performance so we're going to put the bills at number nine that defense is great folks and josh allen always takes advantage of short fields and turnovers and all that and now he's starting to move the ball from the 20 to the 20 scoring you know on regular drives where his defense doesn't create short fields for him so this bills team is looking absolutely great we put them at number nine Alrighty, new number eight team, and this team is going to drop back uh, decently heavily here, but the new number eight team is the Baltimore Ravens. I like this Ravens team because of Lamar Jackson, but it's like every week, it's like, all right, Lamar Jackson, what can you do to win us this game? That's all it comes down to. We can't really trust anybody else. The running game, you know, Lamar Jackson's the leading rusher in every single game. Uh, they're not really doing anything great that Lamar Jackson doesn't require, that doesn't require Lamar Jackson to be a a huge part of the play or the drive or the series or the game we just saw Marquise Brown drop pass after pass he's not reliable we've been known this and once again it's showing out here again they almost lost to the Lions it took a 66 yard field goal to allow them to win but once again Lamar Jackson helped put them in place to get that long kick it always comes down to Lamar Jackson and usually he comes up clutch they're 2-0 and he beat the Chiefs unfortunately you know it came down to Lamar Jackson in overtime against the Raiders and he floundered but usually for the most part they're 2-0 
and one, he gets it done. But that's all they have is Lamar Jackson. They literally live and die by Lamar Jackson. The Ravens defense couldn't shut out the, the Lions. I mean, come on, what are we doing out here? So we're going to move the Ravens back a little bit. I don't want to totally move them out of the top 10. But if they keep floundering here, if they keep winning but floundering, I think I may move them out of the top 10. So we're going to move the Ravens back from 5 to 8. They got to do something else besides Lamar Jackson. We need to be able to count and rely on somebody else besides Lamar Jackson. Now, good news here for this Ravens team. Their rookie wide receiver should be good to go this week. So you don't need to Marquise Brown anymore. I would throw that man in the garbage. I would just stick with Sammy Watkins, and I'm blanking on their wide receiver's name. He's been out every single week, uh, but uh, hopefully he can get back out here and uh, you know be a huge piece that they need him to be, kind of one of their best wide receivers. We'll see if he can live up to that hype. So Ravens dropping back to number eight. Alrighty, number seven, we are going to keep the Raiders. Once again, the Raiders are 3-0, so we give them credit for that, but tough, close wins here, and the tough, close wins, tight wins are coming at home. What is that about? You beat the Steelers decently on the road, but then you basically get gifted the game against the Ravens on at home in overtime because Lamar Jackson fumbles, and then against the Dolphins this week, in overtime, well, first of all, you allow overtime to happen when you had an eight-point lead, and then you allow a fourth and 20, and then you allow them to get the field goal. Now, luckily, the Dolphins' offense, uh, the Dolphins' defense ran out of gas at the end of the game, and the Raiders still kind of finally took, you know, the umpteenth opportunity to go out and finally win the game when they closed the door in overtime, finally the second possession. But this Raiders team, it's solid offensively. Defense is solid. But these close games on the at home, they're not really inspiring. It's not something that we can truly sink our teeth into and see like, yeah, this Raiders team, they've got great home field advantage. They'll win every single time on the road, and they can blow out teams. Every game has really kind of been close so far. So this Raiders offense, it's, 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 it's good, folks. They can do whatever they want, whenever they want. They've got the running game. They've got the elite arm, the big arm, and they got the deep threats. they got the speed. they got the height. they got everything. So we're going to leave this Raiders team at number seven just because every win is it's a good win. Winning is always great, but these close wins, they're not really selling us too much on the Raiders. So we will leave them at number seven. Alrighty, new number six team here. And don't worry about the Cowboys, folks. You'll see them later. Don't worry. Uh, but we're going to move up this team. We're going to go the Browns. I mean, nine sacks, folks. I mean, can we talk about that? I don't care if it's against Justin Fields, a rookie quarterback against a bad team, the Bears. I don't care. Nine sacks is nine mother-loving sacks. Miles Garrett, Jadavion Clowney is just too much. And then Kevin Stefanski playing great, um, being a great coach and a Great play caller here for Baker Mayfield in this running game. Oh, my God. Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. I mean, both rushing for, like, 80 yards. And then Kareem Hunt, like, catching another 60 to 80. I mean, this Browns team is truly stacked with weapons. OBJ's first game back. No worries there. He's reacclimated. So this Browns defense is the true best thing about the team. And then the offense is so gosh dang so gosh dang good everywhere that Baker Mayfield just needs to be a game manager quarterback and that's exactly what he is and Kevin Stefanski is calling exactly to a T what needs to be called here for this Browns team to have success offensively so we're going to move the Browns all the way up to number six this week from number 10 they've got it man they truly have it and uh, sacking Justin Fields nine and a half times that's what this Browns defense is all about man Alrighty, number five, new number five team up here. We're moving this team back a little bit. We're moving this Chiefs team back one spot from four to five. And the Chiefs, I mean, the great thing about the Chiefs, they always overturn their, um, overcome their turnovers. They always kind of get it done at the final drive of the game. Then they always win in walk off fashion with a touchdown or a field goal. Patrick Mahomes always gets them in the clutch, allows them to have a chance to win the game. But so far, these turnovers and then, you you know, not being clutch. You know, we get Clyde Edwards-Hilaire fumbling at the end of the game in game number two. They lose the game to the Ravens. Then we get just Patrick Mahomes couldn't get it done in the final drive when they were down six points because the Chargers go for the touchdown to make it a six-point game. So now he has to go down and score a touchdown. And then just unfortunately, you can't clutch it every single time. Nobody has a 100% clutch percentage getting it done and winning the game when they're down with the final possession. So we're starting to see kind of 
uh, Patrick Mahomes kind of uh, turn into a regular person a little bit and all these turnovers what the heck so we know that we've kind of seen this last season as well with the Chiefs a lot of turnovers but then they clean it up and then they get to the Super Bowl so this is going to be kind of a deciding one, two, three week stretch right here. Are the Chiefs going to succumb to all the turnovers and not clutch ability, or do they rise out of that like they always do? Uh, but we do have to drop them back for losing to the Chargers at home. Losing the game is never great. Uh, to all those turnovers is never great. But the fact that they were still in the game, that's what the Chiefs are, folks. So we move the Chiefs back one spot here, and we'll see what happens next week to see if we move them down even more. Alrighty, number four team. We're moving this back, uh, this team back one spot. We're gonna move the Bucks back from three to two. They just went toe to toe with the best team in the league. They lost on the road. They lost by double digits and a little bit of a blowout there. So Bucks, we know the Rams are better than the Bucks. That's why we had the Rams over the Bucks in our power rankings. Duh. Um, and the Rams will still be number one. That's a spoiler alert. But there it is. They win. They beat the Bucks. Top five teams going at each other. Top three teams according to us coming into this week. And the Rams beat the Bucks. So that's not that. The Bucks are bad. The Bucks just lost to a really great team on the road. Unfortunate. The Bucks are at home. Do they win? I don't think so. I think it's a maybe a little bit closer. Maybe they only lose by three or seven. But I still think the Rams are overall better than the Bucks. It's Tom Brady. It's Bruce Arians. Um, he didn't have Antonio Brown. I don't know how much that really plays into it. He's still got great weapons everywhere else. This Bucks team is still great. Unfortunately, they just lost to a great opponent. So we have to drop him back a spot. Alrighty, our new number two, uh, three team, and I love this team so gosh damn much. I um, mean, they solidified it last night, but we're moving the Cowboys to number three. I absolutely love Dak Prescott in this offense. It's so gosh dang good, folks. This defense is full of ball hawks. They will take over the ball multiple times in the game. They surround the ball. They rush to the ball. They tackle the ball carriers. The defense doesn't allow that many points, and the offense can literally score on any single drive. Any single drive, they have the ability to kind of take the top off the defense in the running game with Tony Pollard and Zeke, or take the top off the passing game with Dak's big arm and Amari Cooper's ability to get open and CeeDee Lamb's ability to get open and now we get Dalton Schultz coming into his own here in game number three so everything is just clicking for this Cowboys team man and I'm very close to moving them to number two We'll see what they what the Cowboys do next week and this number two team does next week. But, man, oh, man, the leadership, the the execution, Dan Quinn's defense is fantastic. They have playmakers everywhere on the field, offensively, defensively, at every single position. Cowboys, man, cannot talk highly about them enough. Cowboys at three. All right, then Cardinals are going to stay at number two. Another kind of game on the road where it gets a little wonky, where they're losing and turning the ball over, but then they just stick to the course, and it's Kyler Murray getting it done in the clutch and scoring balls in the third quarter, and then the defense gets some takeaways and some turnovers, which fuels the offense, and they can score at will whenever they want. One big play. They've got all the pieces everywhere. Once again, great athleticism at the quarterback position. Great weapons DeAndre Hopkins AJ Green Christian Kirk I mean they've got it all folks so Cardinals are still going to stay at number two they're three and oh they're winning games close they're winning games on the road they're winning when they're losing down big when they're turning over the ball and they have to come together and be flawless for the third quarter onward and they are showing ways to win games I think that is absolutely fantastic and then we just heard from Kyler Murray off of the win against the Jaguars this week. He's like, you know, two years ago, last year, we don't win this game, but we've learned how to win. We know how to win. We stay the course. We never kind of get flustered in our uh, poor performances or our lackluster drives or our turnovers or anything like that. We stick to the course. We stick to the game plan, and they get the wins, and the uh, Cardinals are going to stay at number two because of that. And then the Rams will stay at number one. Sean McVay, Matthew Stafford, that's all I need to say. Oh, well, I guess I could shout, uh, shout out Deshaun Jackson for still being absolutely a speedster out there, getting it done. Oh, and then I could also shout out Cooper Cup, who's emerging as one of the top wide receivers in this league. Definitely got to put him at top 10. And I think you could potentially make the argument for top five for Cooper Cup. And then the genius play calling of Sean McVay. And then the shutdown corner of um, Jalen Ramsey. And then the shutdown edge rusher um, sack monster that is Aaron Donald. This team is everything, folks. They just went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Bucks and beat them by 10. They were moving the ball consistently. And that's what Matthew Stafford does, folks. We know what he was in Detroit. 
didn't have the system, didn't have the coach. Now he has a system and the coach, and they are winning games and looking gosh dang good and beating the good teams. Rams are still the best team in the league, folks. So these are our power rankings heading into week four. We got Packers, Chargers, Broncos all fighting for that number 10th spot heading into this week. We got the Bills at nine, the Ravens at eight, the Raiders at seven, the Browns at six, the Chiefs at five, the Bucks at four, the Cowboys at three, the Cardinals at two, and the Rams still the number one team in the league.